how well do you know consolidation accounting? This is a 10 question quiz. It is a multiple choice question quiz. You're gonna have four choices. I'm gonna ask the question. You're gonna have 15 seconds to answer each one of those questions. And once you're done the quiz, I wanna know how many you got correct in the comment section below. Let me know how well you did on the quiz. All right, let's dive into these 10 questions. Question number one. When consolidating multiple business entities into one economic entity, the parent company's investment in subsidiary will equal, and you're assuming here the parent owns 100% of the sub, A, equity, B, assets, C, net income, or D, non-controlling interest. The answer is A, equity. The parent's investment in subsidiary should equal the subsidiary's equity. This does assume the parent owns 100% of the subsidiary. In the example here, Parent Incorporated owns 100% of investment in 100 LLC. And if I switch over to 100 LLC's balance sheet, the equity section of 100 LLC will equal the investment in 100 LLC on Parent Incorporated's books. Question number two, what happens to intercompany accounts between the parent and subsidiary when preparing consolidated financial statements? A, combined in the financials, B, eliminated, C, eliminate the subsidiary only, or D, you reflect the gross values. The answer is B, eliminated. Intercompany accounts between a parent and a subsidiary will be eliminated when preparing consolidated financial statements. There are not any do-tos and do-froms when you're consolidating multiple businesses into one economic entity. You're going to eliminate the intercompany receivables and the intercompany payables. Question number three, what is not a reason intercompany balances between two entities would not balance? A, a missing journal entry, B, a foreign currency translation, C, a lack of intercompany agreement, or D, a cash transfer was recorded as a dividend. The answer is C, lack of intercompany agreement. Ideally, you want to have an intercompany service agreement between a parent and a subsidiary, especially if the parent is a paymaster. Now, a lack of an intercompany service agreement, as long as the accounting is handled properly, will not cause balancing issues. Question number four, what is non-controlling interest? A, equity method investment income. B, portion of an entity that the parent owns and controls. C, a portion of an equity in a subsidiary not attributable to the parent. Or D, interest income. The answer is C. It's the portion of equity in a subsidiary not attributable to the parent. ASC 810-10-20 defines non-controlling interest as the portion, the net assets, in a subsidiary not attributable directly or indirectly to a parent. Non-controlling interest will be found in the equity section of the consolidated balance sheet. If you've gotten any value out of this video so far, please 
smash that like button and consider subscribing. All right, let's go on to question number five. What does VIE stand for when we're talking about consolidated financial statements? A, very important entity. B, variable interest entity. C, very interest entity. Or D, variable important entity. The answer is B, variable interest entity. A variable interest entity, a VIE, is controlled by the parent and consolidated into the financial statements. A VIE doesn't necessarily, from an ownership perspective, look like it's controlled by the parent, but there's other facts and circumstances outside of the ownership that makes this entity consolidate into the financial statements. Under ASC 810-10, the voting interest model states that a reporting entity must consolidate an entity that it has a controlling financial interest in. What is the general starting point for voting model consolidation? A, over 50% of the outstanding voting shares. B, over 75% of the outstanding voting shares. C, over 25% of the outstanding voting shares. Or D, it's 100% owned. The answer is A, 50% of the outstanding voting shares. The voting interest model starts with assessing whether the parent entity ownership of the subsidiary is over 50%. This is not the ending point of the analysis, but if a parent owns 50% of a subsidiary, there's a good chance that subsidiary will be consolidated into the financial statements. Question number seven, which example below would most likely result in consolidating a variable interest entity, a VIE? A, the voting control is below 50%. B, contractual revenue is 95% allocated to parent. C, both entities share office space. Or B, the board of directors votes to consolidate the subsidiary. The answer is B. Contractual revenue is 95% allocated to the parent. A variable interest entity is an entity that doesn't have the typical voting rights to consolidate, but has other characteristics of a controlling financial interest. VIEs go through a qualitative assessment instead of a quantitative assessment. A couple examples of when you might have a VIE is the entity doesn't have enough equity to finance its operations. Equity holders lack the ability to direct the entity's activities contractual or structured non-substantive voting rights, or preferential revenue and profit sharing. In this example, the subsidiary allocated contractually 95% of its revenue to the parent. Question eight, when consolidating a foreign subsidiary into the parent, what would be considered the reporting currency? A, foreign currency spot rate. B, subsidiary's currency. C, functional currency. Or D, parent's currency. The answer is D, the parent's currency. The currency the parent prepares its financial statements in is the reporting currency. The subsidiary will need to be translated into the parent's currency when consolidated into one economic entity. Question number nine. 
a parent entity owns 70% of the voting stock of a subsidiary it consolidates into its financial statements. This subsidiary has 100,000 of net income. When consolidating the subsidiary's results, how much is non-controlling interest income? A, $70,000, B, $30,000, C, $100,000, or D, zero? The answer is B, $30,000. The subsidiary's income is $100,000. And our parent owns 70%. So 30% is not owned by the parent. So 100,000 times 30% equals $30,000. That is the amount of income from the subsidiary that we are consolidating into our entity that is not owned by the parent. It's owned by other entities. That's why we're backing it out as non-controlling interest income. Question number 10, our last question. We're going to be looking at a hypothetical scenario. What is the journal entry to eliminate the inner company accounts between Parent Incorporated, 100 LLC, and Sub LLC when consolidating the financial statements? Is it A, Debit intercompany payable parent, 75000 Credit intercompany receivable subsidiaries, 75000 B, debit intercompany subsidiaries, 75000 Credit intercompany receivable parent, $75,000. C, you don't need a journal entry at all. D, you debit intercompany sub LLC, $25,000. You credit intercompany receivable parent, $25,000. The answer is A. We're going to debit the intercompany payable with the parent for $75,000. And we're going to credit the intercompany receivable of the subsidiaries for $75,000, which will net those to zero because when we have a consolidated balance sheet, we don't want to show intercompany payments because from a one economic entity, there is no due tos or froms. From each entity, they're one economic entity. So you're looking at them as one unit. There's no intercompany payables between each entity. All right, that's our quiz on consolidation accounting. Let me know in the comments how many you got right on the quiz. And I hope you learned something from this quiz. And I will see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye.